I am ranked number one. One! That means I'm the best. Luis Ortiz officially severs ties with Golden Boy Promotions. He was supposed to fight on the Canelo Khan undercard in May. That fell through for whatever reasons. He was supposed to be fighting Alexander Ustinov on the undercard of Canelo and Liam Smith. Negotiations hit several problems according to this article. And now he's split with Golden Boy as talks for a fight with Ustinov still continue. Apparently... Stefan Friedman, a spokesman for Golden Boy Promotions, say they have they have parted amicably. Of course, Ortiz is the interim WBA heavyweight champion. The fight with um, Ustinov should still be going ahead. Andre Rybinski won the purse bids, and there's talk that it could be on the undercard of Kovalev Ward in November. I'm kind of um concerned about this guy's career. He's struggling to get people in the ring with him. He is. He is struggling to get them in the ring. Deserves a decent fight. A good, not a decent fight. A big fight. I, I think he does. I, I don't think there's um, any more middle of the road heavyweights he has to beat to get a big fight. I think he deserves a big fight. He can't nail one. He's left Golden Boy. Finally severed the ties officially today. But we've been known about this, that this was going to happen for about a month or two. And I don't know if it's because he got busted for PEDs. And I don't know if it's because he's an aging fighter. He's not young. He's in his mid-30s. And I think on the, the older side of his mid-30s. So I don't know if it's that. But Heyman, he hasn't done anything. Aram, King, Duva. Don't nobody want a piece of this guy? I don't know. It seems to me a commodity like a big puncher at heavy. With the resurgence of the heavyweight division recently since Fury beat Klitschko. We haven't seen all the big matches, but people have been reinvigorated when they talk about heavyweight boxing. You would have thought somebody would have snapped him up. Maybe he should relocate to the UK. Have a few fights there. He'd do well here. They'd like him. Either Frank or Eddie would sign him, I believe. Frank Warren or Eddie would sign him. And if not, Mick Hennessy. <laughs> K2, maybe in Germany. Europe, perhaps. Relocate, relocate. Time's running out for this guy. And it ain't like he's just a huge puncher. He knows how to fight. He knows how to box. He's a southpaw. There's a lot there to work with, man. Learn how to speak English if you're going to box, unless you've got a Canelo fan base. That's my opinion, man. That's my opinion. Peace. According to Kell Brook's trainer, Dominic Engel, Triple G's power overrides a lot of his mistakes. He goes on to say... Kelbrook is 30 years of age. He wants the big fights. He thinks that Kelbrook's rivals at 147 are pricing themselves out of a fight with Kel. The Garcias, the Thurmans, the Marquezes, they were all ringside for when he beat Sean Porter. He said, them guys can't compare to Kel, stature-wise, physically. He said they're tiny compared to him. So why would they want to fight Kel? He said, Kells had 36 fights. He's made decent money, but he needs a challenge. That's the thing we knew two or three days before this was announced. Just before the Eubank negotiations went down and never resurfaced. From what Dominic Ingle's saying here is when Khan pulled out of a proposed fight with Kell Brook and took the Canelo fight, Kells' frustration grew and he needed that challenge. So in steps Golovkin. When Eddie offered it to Brooke and Dominic Ingle, Brooke had no hesitation in taking it. The frustration has been growing for a little while. He obviously had the leg injuries which stalled him from making his first defense of the belt. It was slashed up by a machete. So the Golovkin fight was an easy decision to make. It was easy to negotiate. He says Brooke is not a small kid. His natural fighting weight is probably 160 middleweight. He's just got the ability to make 147. But Dominic says, obviously, as Brooke gets older, it's a little harder to get down to that poundage. And it can affect your performance. Brooke is under a strict regime. They monitor Brooke at Sheffield Hallam University. Measure his weight loss. Well, if that's the case, how could they came in at 175? Maybe that's all part of the plan, so let me not say nothing. So they measure his weight loss, his strength at particular weights. 
so he doesn't lose strength when he gets to welterweight. They're the type of things that they're looking out for. At 160, Brooke will not have to go through a grueling weight loss regime two to three weeks out before the fight, which does take a lot out of you. Without going through the process of getting to 147, he'll be a strong middleweight. When he fights at welter, his sparring weight is between 156 and 160. And he looks strong at that weight. And he's actually sparring bigger fighters. Dominic rationalizes whatever Brook is going to be losing as an advantage of being a big welter. He will be gaining more by being a middleweight because he hasn't got to go through that extra regime. When asked what does he think of Golovkin as a fighter, he says his power overrides a lot of his mistakes. He's not the best boxer in the world. He says he's been watching Triple G for a long time. He saw the Adama fight. Where Adama was stopped in seven. He said he's not the finished article. He looks all over the place. He's just got raw power. He says, obviously, Abe Sanchez has refined him and made him smarter. He's a much better fighter now. He can punch. He throws good body shots. He doesn't mind taking shots. He walks through them. He also says people say Kel hasn't really boxed anybody, but he believes Triple G and Kel are in the same position. The only difference is Brook has better competition in the welterweight division than Golovkin does at middle. Well, the only problem with that, Dominic, is Brook hasn't fought none of this talent-rich 147 competition except for Sean Porter. In all fairness to Eddie Hearn and Kel Brook, though, you've got to blame the IBF for some of the mandatories that they've let Kel participate in. Absolutely dreadful. Dominic isn't impressed with the middleweight division. There's nobody he rates apart from Triple G. He says 160 isn't what it once was when the fighters used to take each other on. He's not getting tested at 160, Golovkin. It's about who can stick to the game plan, who can handle the power. Golovkin does have a lot of power. He's strong. He'll have to be a little cautious with Kel. So Kel will have to be super cautious. A good marker for Brook is Martin Murray. He did exceptionally well. In the early stages of the contest, Murray knew he was up against it and he only believed that he could win around halfway through the contest. It took Golovkin 11 rounds to get rid of Murray. If Murray had a little more belief, he could have done even better. Murray's a very tough guy, but he's not the most skillful, and he made it to the 11th. And that's where I think Kell will be able to get his shots off, because he's a very good boxer. Everything can change on fight night, though. Eddie Hearn eliminates David Price from the November the 26th date that they have reserved for Anthony Joshua's next title defense. Price has tried to get a rise out of the Joshua camp, claiming he floored AJ during a sparring session when AJ was an amateur and Price was a six-fight professional. Eddie Hearn told Sky Sports, David Price will not satisfy the demands of fight fans worldwide Showtime, they need a credible opponent. David Price is not ranked in the top 15 and he doesn't feel David Price is ready for the mix. Not quite yet. He needs a breakthrough performance. Perhaps a domestic clash against a rival. But November, it will not be David Price. Hearn, however, he um, opened the door for David Price to perhaps face Joseph Parker on the same bill. But... Joe has the shot against Anthony Joshua locked down already. Now, I'm not promoting ducking, but he already beat Takam in the Eliminator. Why is he effectively going to fight another Eliminator? He's going to fight Dimitrenko. Until he gets his title shot, he should just pick his opponents and fight the right opponents that's going to prepare him for the title shot. Now, if David Price fits that criteria, all well and good, but he's under no obligation to fight David Price at this stage. What's Eddie Hearn talking about? He's saying that Joseph Parker is happy to fight on the Joshua card in November if he's not the opponent for AJ. And he'd like to see Parker versus Price in a final eliminator. Wasn't the Takam fight a final eliminator? I mean, they've got to start negotiations in November, said the IBF. Both Parker and Joshua. So I don't know what Eddie Hearn's talking about. Well, I've got, I've got a fight. I've got a fight. David Price versus Jarrell Miller. A crossroads fight. I don't care where it is. England or America. They're both doing a lot of talking recently. Let's see it. 
I mean, you could even put it on the same bill as Huey Fury versus Andy Ruiz, which is supposed to be in play for the UK. Something, however, tells me that we won't see either fight, though.